Hi, everybody. Welcome to uh, this month's live webinar. We do have two every month. The other one is always on demand. This one is the first in actual EA three part series. So it's all about getting all of your registrations, everything set up online. Uh, with the end result being if you want to have class listings tables, but there really is a lot of nuts and bolts to kind of go through and make sure you've got all your checklists checked off and stuff. Uh, if you have not met me before, my name is Marie Baldwin and I am the training specialist here at Jackrabbit. In the background, we have Rebecca and Bethany. They will answer any questions that come in and awesome. Oh, somebody's saying I can't hear anything. Oh. Okay, she's got it. I was like, whoa, we did it. We did a test earlier. Half Moon Bay. Oh, nice. I am going to California doing a live training in August. Uh, okay, so Bethany and Rebecca, they will answer any questions that you guys have. Uh, just while people are getting in, like, honestly, when I started this, there was 20, and now we're like up to uh, more than triple that. Uh, I was trying to set it up as a poll and I couldn't, but I'm just going to ask you guys that are on here right now and you can drop it in the chat. If there was one thing that Jackrabbit could do that you really, really, really wish it does do, just drop it in there. And I'm going to actually filter those out and send them to our product team. And so just so that they have a hands on of uh, where or what everybody wants. I said where because Beverly said hello from Tampa. I'm going to Tampa. I fly in on Sunday. For a week so maybe i can come visit you okay so split billing that's a good one yes nashville i believe rebecca's going to nashville in a couple of weeks tina somebody else said split billing thank you yep i'm just looking through oh jessica hello from the philippines you are coming in from far and wide uh add the registration for a new season okay laura we you might get that answer today oh yeah this is awesome love it drop students to lead fall individually yeah we i've heard that one a lot too uh zapier is coming it's in the testing stages right now and it's eventually going to change everybody's lives i will tell you that right now uh, I've worked with it in the past. If you haven't, it is really, really easy to use. Uh, if you're on here and you wish that we integrated with Zapier and you're not familiar with it, uh, just go to their website. They have a lot of webinars to just let you know and trainings to like kind of how to get things set up. And then once we release it, you're like good to go. Releasing policies when students are enrolled into the class. Not the first day they start the class. Oh, okay, that I like that. <laughs> Oh, events, yeah. Priority enrollment to a select customer base. Raquel, I like that one too. Ah, the texting. Sadly, that's not us. That is the governing body for texting, so we try. Uh, Raquel, I'm not sure if you do or not, but if you find you have a lot of restrictions around texting, you could always sign up for Jackrabbit Plus. Uh, that way you can send push notifications. You can actually even send like videos, pictures, and there's no uh, restriction on that. Converting leads to trials. Oh, two enrolled student. Oh, just, oh, I love that one. Yes, have the calendar show closed dates when entering makeups. Naomi, I think you might've chatted in about that recently. JR Plus, is that with the app? Yes, it is, yeah. Okay, so let's get rolling right along. <clears throat> so first, just I'm gonna, cause we spent so much time on this, I'm gonna just run through the housekeeping really, really quickly. Uh, recording of this will be emailed to you. Again, use the chat, ask any questions that you want. Uh, I'm going to try to, as I'm going through, skim over them for the most part. If you find your screen is too small, you can always minimize your chat. If you have any issues at all, like if you hear me talking, all of a sudden you don't hear me. If you click F5 on your keyboard, that should help to refresh it. Uh, if you do find you're having some kind of like any kind of technical issues, just try to close out all of your other tabs and that should help. So first, let's just talk about all the ways you can connect with us. I'm not going to explain them all. 
in detail just for the sake of time so you guys can get back to your regular work. Uh, you can reach out to Jackrabbit support anytime at all. We are open, technically open, uh, from 10 to 6 Eastern time. Uh, we do have somebody always watching our tickets. There's always somebody watching our queue. And uh, if you are stuck, check out the resource center. That's the bull horn icon in your top right hand corner. And there as well, you can actually get to our webinars page. So it's an actual website or web page on our Jackrabbit website. You can sign up for notifications there to be notified. Like I said, we do actual just uh, more on demand webinars. So you can sign up and see those. So the next one I will be doing will be all about the parent portal. And so if you want to see when that gets uploaded, you can sign up for those. Next, we have our Jackrabbit training system. Uh, this is really good. If you are a brand new person to Jackrabbit, or if you are an owner, manager, director, and you know you're going to have new people sign up, it is a great, great way to have your staff go through all of the steps all of the processes and it just takes it a little bit off you so you don't have to kind of do your own training manual you just need to do it for say your policies and procedures last certainly but not least is the facebook users group if you are not on it i highly encourage you to join it uh, after every webinar the admins of the group are like oh there must have been a webinar today because we've got a whole bunch of new people join uh, the Facebook users group, it's not so much about asking support type questions, but it's more about, I've seen people ask like, what do you do for your policies? How do you set up your camps? Uh, what do you do about uh, charging process fees back to families? Uh, things like that. So, and you can go in there and actually search. So you don't need to post every single time. You can go in there and search and see kind of all of the other uh, questions. One that is really, really popular is, is Jackrabbit Plus, the app, uh, worth it? If you type in Jackrabbit Plus, you will see a whole bunch of commentary on that. So this is what we're gonna be covering this afternoon. Uh, we're gonna talk just for a second about registration versus enrollment. Uh, your general, set, we're gonna go over some general settings, then your online registration settings. I'm gonna talk a little bit extra about our field option labels, uh, registration fee, for just particular classes. And as well, uh, we are gonna talk a little tiny bit about policies and I'm glad that Bethany is on with me because she is her policy uh, guru, but I just have a little bit that I want to touch on that. So first of all, registration versus enrollment. Like what is the difference? If you're newer to Jackrabbit, you might not totally understand. But basically the way to think of it is, is that students don't register for classes, a family registers a student. So registration is when a family is added to Jackrabbit. Enrollment is when a student is added to a class. So on your online registration page, you technically can have somebody register and have your students enroll, but you could also sometimes just have your registration open to capture the family information and then they may enroll either in person or through the parent portal. So we are going to get started. I'm just going to turn my screen off because I am going to be looking all sorts of different ways. And I need to share my screen. Oopsies. And I'm just going to make this a little bit bigger for you. There. So everybody should be able to see my Jackrabbit database. So before you even start with your registration form, there are a few things that you kind of need to go over. Some of them you might need to contemplate about. Others are just like nuts and bolts, like I said earlier, that you need to get into. So first we're gonna go over some of your general settings. So here under your gear, settings, general. And what pops up first are your, just one sec, I'm just gonna move this little guy over out of the way. That should make it a little bit bigger. So the very first thing, 
Uh, when you open your general settings, you get your organizational defaults. Right here, you will need to make sure that you have your tax information entered. But also, you will notice just below, do you want to tax your tuition fees? And do you want to tax your registration fees? So yes or no, depending where you are, it could have a different label. This is your tax rate if you need it to change and or update that. I'm just going to scroll down here. And then next, we have your receipt settings. So when somebody registers, let's just say they're enrolling into a class, what do you want your receipt to have? A link to your parent portal? I suggest always yes. That way they can pay online if you have e-payments enabled and if you want things to be itemized. Next, we have your student settings. So your student age format, right now I just have display year only, but you can choose to, to display your year and your month. And do you have custom grade levels? Yes or no. Hide citizenship? Yes or no. I have mindset to know. And then next we have high gender. Yes or no. So with gender, it kind of is a little bit twofold. It so you can hide it. Absolutely, it does not show anywhere in Jackrabbit whatsoever. I have mindset to know because I have different gender options besides just male and female. So that is why I have mine hidden to know. It is absolutely optional. People do not have to put in a gender if they want, and I'll show you that in just a little bit. And then next we have your class settings. These are all really, really basic for the most part. You send an enrollment to your instructors. Do you allow future enrollments? Uh, show your class duration. Warn if somebody is enrolling outside of an age range. And then these ones are more for just you and not your registration form. And the rest of these are more parent portal related. Just checking here, except for right here. So your time and date settings. So you will notice mine is set to Eastern. That is Jackrabbit's home base. Uh, you will want to make sure that you have your correct time zone set. That way, if somebody does submit a registration form, it's your time zone and it's not your default of Eastern. And same thing, you can change your format and whether or not you observe daylight savings times. Uh, the times with uh, daylight savings, they do automatically populate in whatever they are going to be. So just going to close your eyes because I'm gonna scroll up a lot here. The next thing you're going to want to make sure of is your logo. You definitely want your logo on your registration form. So I've got mine here. So you have the option to upload your logo, see it in action, delete it. Uh, there are size requirements and we do just give you links to some different editors if you need to resize your logo. And I am just going to check the chat really, really quickly here. Looking at Ashley's, okay, yep, yeah. and okay. So just one secky. I have like a whole lot of screens up here. Okay, so next I'm just going to talk about, we're going to come down here to your user defined fields. So on your forms, it applies to your parent portal and they can also see and or update them. Uh, sorry, they are on your registration form. They can also have the option to see and update them in the parent portal. So you get five user defined fields. So here I've just got a couple that they're not on the regular registration form, but it's information that I want to collect as an organization. So an alternate pickup person, an extra emergency contact, whether or not they are a military family, maybe you offer a discount to military families only. Uh, on my student, I might ask their skill level. Uh, this is one that's really popular if you are a swim school. So if you already know that your child is that, say, you know, like blue, and then you can kind of add that in there as well.
then the last thing on this page I'm going to talk about is your drop down list and your category ones. I know, I bet you did not think we were going to be going to category ones today. But you will notice I have a lot of category ones. But you can notice I have some that say hide from customers, some that are hide from users. So let's just, you know, COVID-19, it's not showing up anymore. I've got nothing to do with it. It's hidden from everybody. So within my database, within my families. But then let's just say gift card sales. That's a good one to look at. So I still need to be able to see that category one when I'm working in my database, but it does not apply to my family. So I don't want that option to show up when they are searching for classes on their online registration form. Same thing with the one just above it, the fantastic gymnastics. We used to offer that. We don't offer it anymore. I need to keep that category one for my reporting, but it doesn't apply to any of my current families. So I just want to keep it hidden. So what high from customers means is that when they're searching, in your registration form or your portal for classes, they are not going to see that. Okay, so I'm just gonna go back to my home screen. So next, we're gonna dig right into the online registration form. So you would see here, first it opens up to your getting started page. It just lets you know your org ID, a link for your class listings tables. But keep in mind, you can't have class listings tables until you have all of this other stuff set up. So let's go right into your settings. So the very first thing you will see on your settings is the ability to preview re your reg form, which you kind of want to, when you're first setting it up or changing sessions or changing things up, keep going back and forth just so that you can see what new families are going to be able to see. So under your general settings, you know, we have your header text, your welcome. Uh, just to let you know that your logo does show just below that. And then next we have class enrollment. Again, this is very site specific. So your options are to either have it hidden. So maybe you only want to capture new family re registrations and then meet with them, talk to them one-on-one -on -one to decide where their child is going to register into. You can have it as optional. You can also have it as required. So maybe you're saying, you know what, if you're going to fill out this registration form, you have to register for a class. I keep mine at optional. Next, we just have your class instructions. So you can just read my text there. You can put anything in there at all that you want. And then below that, if you use Google Analytics, you do have the ability to add your Google tracking ID. And the next we have after registration is complete. So would you like to display a confirmation message or I will re redirect them to another page. My gosh, I'm all tongue-tied today. Uh, I've got mine set to read it direct and my redirect is my parent portal. You might have somewhere else that you wanna redirect them to, maybe a Google Doc, a student handbook that you want them to download, let's say. Um, most likely, if you are not having people enroll in a class, you would just give them a confirmation message. But if you're having them enroll in a class, we recommend that you direct them to the parent portal and then for the most part, have them pay for the class right, as, right away. And then next, we have your email confirmation settings. So just what you wanna have in that email once they're finished their form. And then on that email, do you want to show your class dates, your instructor? And then I've got mine left blank just because I do a lot of testing in my database and I don't wanna get inundated with emails. You can add any notification email that you want. If you want to add more than one person to getting the email, you just need to add a semicolon at the end. And then you also have the option, if there is no notification email listed, do you want to use the location email for your, the email for your location? And then next, we've got show high class information on the registration form. So on your instructor's tabs, you do have the option to have an instructor nickname. So let's just say like, my name is Marie Baldwin, but everyone knows me as Miss Marie. So you have the option to show their nickname, the option to show the number of openings. Again, this is very, that one is very site specific as well. And if you wanna show the start and end dates, I've got mindset to show absolutely everything. 
And then next, if a class is full, do you want to allow them to join your wait list? So whether or not you do or do not have wait lists, that will you know, be dependent on the ones that are below it. But what impacts your number of class openings? Online registration, your quick registration, makeups, makeups with your quick registration, uh, future drops, that is automatically set to no. Uh, same thing with your future enrolls, and you can have it turned on or not for your quick registration. Next, we have your class search slash filter options. So do you want to apply a gender filter? Yes or no? So do you have classes that are specifically for just one specific gender, no matter what it might could be rainbow? You're only If you only identify as rainbow, you can only go into the rainbow class. Again, I have mine set to no. Uh, apply an age filter. So within Jackrabbit, you have the ability on your class summary tab to apply age filters to your students that are coming in. You do have the ability to turn that off if you do not do that. And the next, this one kind of trips people up a little bit. So your category one, two, or three label. So for me, for my category one, I've got program. Because as a brand new person, coming in, even a, person, a parent maybe that's been around for 10 years, they have no idea what category one means. We know what it means because we're users of Jackrabbit. So for me, my category one, it always shows up parent-facing as program. My category twos always show up parent-facing as level because that's how I have mine set up. So again, depends how you have yours set up. And my category three always shows up parent-facing as rec or team. And then next we have your class listings tables on your web website. Do you want to show your registration links and or do you want to show full classes? And then next, we just have a couple there for your quick registration settings. So remember your quick registration is if you're registering somebody from within Jackrabbit. So you, one of your staff, they're going to open up at a family, open up that internal quick reg form. Do you still want to require the email? the email confirmation box, and do you want to get sent a copy? I'm just going to pop back for one moment and just check the good old chat again for you. Okay, so Ashley's, I think I covered that, so that's why you can turn it on, you can turn it off, you don't have to have it. There are some organizations that actually do not use that at all. Um, so Mary, you don't have to allow a future enrollment. If you don't want anybody to be able to enroll in a class, let's just say, you know, for June 1st, you don't have to allow that. You would only, they would only be able to register just right then and there. Uh, oh, Rebecca got that. Yes, so Mary, so that is where this one here comes into play, all of these. And, okay, yeah. Uh, oh, Julie had a great question. Is the redirect to parent portal a specific URL or is each URL different for each signup? So I'm just gonna scroll up. So close your eyes for a sec. So this here is the link. It is for my parent portal. So what happens if somebody does my online registration, they get my parent portal login page. Can we add an option for a student's nickname? Haley, you could use a user defined field for that. Uh, okay, there. Rebecca and Bethany are good. I'm like looking at the questions and they've already got them answered. You guys are great. Okay, so just one sec. So I'm just going to come back up here. So under your settings, we're back to this field options slash label. So I just showed you those under your general settings. So you can set those up there, like what it is that you want to ask. But then we have some other fields as well, besides those that you can decide to have them required, hidden, or optional. For the most part, every one of them has all of those. 
So if you've got your referral information, I just have mine hidden because I'm in a test environment. Uh, your family information. So a good example of this, and I believe, I believe it was Julia that was in the Philippines. If you wanted a different language for family information, you could actually add that here. I know that we do have some organizations in Mexico and on their intake form, their registration form, it's all actually in Spanish. So they have all their fields as much as they can in their uh, other language. Uh, one thing I will say is that on my form, I have a lot of things hidden and a lot of things is optional. And this is just a personal preference of mine. And it's not just because I'm like working and testing and stuff. If you get a parent come in and you have to, you are mandated to fill in information in 65 fields, you are most likely gonna be like, oh my gosh, or the phone rings and they walk away. So like less is more, more is less. So as long as you can get their main information in, you can always send them an email later and say like, hey, can you please go to your parent portal and update this information versus having them sit there the first time that they're getting into you, seeing your organization and having to sift through all of this information. So again, you can see I've got like state, my zip is optional. Uh, one thing to note, especially with Jackrabbit's new self check-in, primary phone number, I would definitely keep that one as required. If you're using the self check-in, the self check-in, you, you check in using your primary phone number. So for any new families coming in, you're going to want to have that one. So I would definitely keep that one required. And then again, your emergency info, I've got it hidden or you could you know, change it. Health insurance, mine is hidden but I could also change it to health insurance carrier. And now let's just talk about right here. So still on the family. So these are my user defined fields. So you can, if you remember under the general settings right here, this is what I had in. So I can make those fields optional. So I can say, you know what? You are required to tell me who your alternate pickup person is. I'm just gonna change that back. Uh, same thing in emergency contact, uh, for a second one uh, and then same thing military family contact two it's all pretty much the same and then let's just talk about the student so you have your student options so again right here so your student that is you're going to want that required unless you only want families registering and not having any information you cannot register somebody if you allow class enrollment on your registration page you have to have a student because that's who enrolls into the class. And then next, I was speaking earlier about gender. So mine is set as optional. And then again, they can then pick from whatever I have set up in my drop down list. If I wanted to change gender to another term, I could here. Birth date, that is required. And then all of these, for the most part, I've got all of these hidden or optional. It depends whether or not you collect t-shirt sizes. If you need to know their school, their grade level. So it's going to scroll on down. And these are my student user defined fields. So you can see I've got optional is the student in recital. Right now I have that hidden and I've got skill level hidden. I would let's just change that to optional and optional. So I'm just going to scroll right back up here. I'm just going to, actually, we're going to go back. I'm just going to check the chat really, really quickly. Okay, awesome. You guys are doing great. So the next thing I want to talk about are registration fees. So registration fees. Previously in Jackrabbit, registration fees were only on your registration form. Uh, you can now actually have a registration fee on classes through your parent portal. So I'm just going to show you how you would set them up today just for your registration form. So under your gear, settings. So they have their own little space here right now, registration fees. 
and you can see it says new families and existing families because new families are only on your registration form. Existing families are people that already filled out the registration form and are, are enrolling via the parent portal. So first of all, do you even charge registration fees? Some people do, some people don't. If you do not, you can actually just toggle that off and then nothing else shows. But if you do, we have some options. So when do you want to post the registration fee? Always or only when enrolling in a class. So what this means is earlier I said you can have people fill out the registration form but not have them be required to enroll in a class. So maybe you still, if you register with me, you have to pay me, let's just say, $10. And then the next one is how do you post the fees? So do you post per family, per student, or per student per class? And then we also, for all of them, have the option to have a maximum amount. And then next, we have your transaction type. So I've got mine set up as annual membership debit. You will want to make sure under your gear, uh, under your drop down list, that you do have whatever it is you want to call it registration fee, annual fee, that it is already set up there. I can actually select a subtype if I want it and if I want it to have a note. So your note here, for example, could be registration fee from uh, online registration form. And then we've got the category one, registration fee. So again, this is a good example of, you don't need your parents to see registration fee when they're searching for classes. And then the last two is use the first class session, yes or no, or do you want it to always be tied to a specific session? So I've got mine set to class. That is, I would say 95% of the people that is what they use. If you use session, let's just say, for example, you had, because I've got a few sessions open. Let's just say I had this session selected here, but I've got people enrolling for the spring 2023 session. It would actually show this session. So that is why normally it's the first class. Okay, so I'm just gonna scroll back up here going to pop back again to the chat. Make sure there is nothing major happening. That does happen. Okay. Chat is looking good. We're almost there, guys. I was trying to keep this as short and sweet as possible for you. The last, well, second last thing I'm going to talk about are your policies. So you are going to most likely want to have your policies in most instances set up before you ever even go live with your registration form. So I just want to show you something right here. So under my gear, settings, policies. So you can see these are all of my different policies. So just notice I've got a policy for low enrollment, a policy for video release. Then, oops, shoot, click here, I've got policy groups. So I've got all of my different policies, policy groups set up here. So I had a group for my winter, I've got a group for my new spring classes. If you are an organization that does not require or allow enrollment on your registration page, you can still have parents agree to a specific set of policies. So I created a default policy group. So I've got just these three here at it. And then right here, is there a default policy group that parents should agree to even when there is no class enrollment? And you can select from any of these. I just chose this one because the other ones, they apply to specific classes. And then the last thing, before I just show you the registra registration form really quickly, is that on an individual class, you may or may not have a registration fee. You could be charging registration fees to all of your classes. A really good example of this, is, especially with summer coming up, is that maybe you don't have a registration fee for any of your summer classes. 
So if you had classes that had a category one, of let's say camp, you could go in using classes, edit all classes, and you could turn off has a registration fee. So right now this one, I'm just gonna put that back there. And let's have a look now at my registration form. And I need to be just a secchi. Just need to share again. Told you I was going to be sideways because I'm looking at my other screen. So right here, this is my registration form. Let's make that a little bit bigger for you. So like I said before, your logo will appear on top. If they are already a customer, they can always click here. This will bring them right to their parent portal. They do get the notification right here that something is required. Like I said, I have most of mine turned off just for the sake of time. So we have to have our family last name. Let's just say full. They need to have their phone number. Again, these were my family user defined fields. So again, I had mine as optional, so I don't need to add one there. Uh, full clear. Same thing with all of these fields. Oh, sorry. Yep. And then my email. And then their password. So a lot of times parents forget their password. They're not totally sure. They can actually set up their parent portal password here. It is not required because they can always, once they get to your parent portal, click on forgot, enter their email address, and they will get a reset link. Uh, if I wanted to add a contact, it's just me and my daughter, Sally. Your birth date, again, that is required. So I'm just going to throw that up there. And again, these for all of these fields, I had, again, mine left optional. And I did, if you remember, had my classes set to uh, optional if they wanted to enroll in the class. So because I have that set as optional, I don't have to enroll in the class, but I do still need to agree to these policies right here. So I'll just show you something very quickly. So note here, I just have these three default policies that I had. I select to enroll in a class, which you are not going to see right now, but I am going to stop sharing my screen again, just so that you can see it. So you can see, this is what your parents see when they go to enroll in a class. So remember earlier I said about my, uh, level, my rep team. So your parents could always come here. They can click on any class. They can also use all of these filters. If they know a name, they know a certain location they want to go into, a certain session, instructor, a certain program. So remember, these were all of my category ones here. And then again, level and the rec. So I'm just going to close this out. And I am going to register this person in this class. So you can see it comes up here. This is their class. But when you come down here and I notice how many more policies there are, and you can see because it says Adult Ballet Tuesday, because that is a class that they've gone in. So now they've gone from just default policies to all I mean, of we're on the one <laughs> And I need to stop sharing. We're just looking at your pretty face. Uh, registration <laughs> yeah. yeah my pretty face sideways <laughs> uh there we go now i'm back on my form sorry about that guys so like i said this is the class that they are in and then notice here before it had just three so you can see adult ballet if i added say 
10 other classes, those other classes had different policies, all of them would show up here. And then I have to agree. Oh, what's my name? Claire? Cool. Uh, your comments, they can ask questions or comments. You will see that uh, on your process class registration form. And you can also see it on your family tab. Uh, the very last thing I missed this, my gosh, I'm not sure how I did is your payment information. So on mine, minus set is optional. Again, that is totally up to you guys. So I am going to stop sharing this screen again. I should have turned off my camera, but oh, well, it's okay. Let me close this out. General settings page and share. So with your e-payments, if you do not have e-payments, it, it will definitely save your a lot of time. Save, I was going to say save your life, but will save you a lot of time. Uh, you can right here under your credit card and bank account settings, you have the option of how you want it for your online registration form. So do you want your credit card optional? Uh, it's required or no, completely hide the field. So I just keep mine as optional and same thing with you. Oh, sorry, with your parent portal, you do have a lot more settings there. And that is it for that part. I'm just going to get my video screen back up here. Get our slides back up. So I'm just going to quickly, uh, the class list okay yep that was me sorry uh notifications for enrollment in the parent portal live under the gear yes that's it i'm just going back through if anyone has any last minute questions you can pop them in here Awesome, everybody. Okay, so I do have, oh. Uh, yes, yeah, so uh, Caroline, when you open up uh, your online registration form, you can just copy that URL. If you look in the Help Center, uh, Bethany and Rebecca, I know they put it in earlier for the parent portal. It's just it's the same link and then in the help center you'll see five x's and that is your organization's id so i do have a checklist for you so this is just a downloadable checklist that you guys can have just to make sure you've got everything set up with your online registration form it definitely is a lot of help and that is it i don't see any last minute Oh, Joshua, uh, it is possible, sort of, you might be able to import them. If you already have them, let's just say in one class, uh, you'd be able to reach out to Jackrabbit's imports team. At, I believe it's just imports at jackrabbittech.com and they could help you with that. And I could absolutely be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that you can do that. Uh, Okay, you've got that. Thank you. Okay, Bethany knows. Uh, okay, so I handed that out and that is it, everybody. So remember, just stay in touch. If you need us at all, jackrabbitclass.com forward slash support. That shoots an email to us. Uh, same thing, if you need access to those webinars, you can get them from the jackrabbitclass.com uh, page forward slash webinars. You can sign up for alerts for those. Uh, within the next couple of weeks, I will be doing, it will be on demand, uh, the parent portal, uh, getting all of that set up. And then the last piece of it are those class listings tables. So you've got to, you can't just set up the class listings tables until you have your reg form set up and your parent portal set up. That way when parents link, they have a place to go. So that is it, everybody. Uh, don't see any last questions. Rebecca, Bethany, thank you so, so much. And I will see all of you soon. And that's it. Bye for now, everybody.